ever since Old Hatem got announced, he's been placed in all kinds of teams during the theory crafting process within the community. Spread teams, quick bloom teams, bloom teams, he can perform well in all of them. However, something that has scared people so far is how reliant he appears to be on Ahida, the Dendro Archon. Even before Old Hatem got announced, it was always clear Nahida would be an incredible unit for Dendro teams, thanks to her multitude of utility effects combined with her AoE damage. Today, I will go through her synergy with Old Hatem, explaining why they're so great together and showing how some alternative team options compare to her. Let's get straight into it. First of all, let's see why Nahida is so good for Old Hatem specifically. Nahida is an extremely low maintenance sub DPS, who comes with peculiar particle generation mechanics, strong supportive effects, and quite convenient elemental burst mechanics, which make her a really unique character not only for the Dendro element, but for Genshin Impact in general. The most noticeable thing about her support for Old Hatem is her elemental mastery buff passive, which allows her to give a certain amount of EM to the active character, based on the total elemental mastery of the character who has the most on the team. This will realistically allow your Old Hatem to receive at least 200 EM through that during his damage window, which is quite meaningful since he has significant elemental mastery scaling on the most important parts of his kit, and even a talent that provides him damage buffs based on his total EM, up to a fixed amount. Generally speaking, it will be very hard for him to reach that cap without external buffs, so this type of contribution from Nahida is always going to be great. In fact, this buff alone gives a 16% increase to Old Hatem's personal damage on spread teams, and it becomes even higher if you have his signature weapon, since his passive benefits from that extra elemental mastery as well. In comparison, 16-20% to is the increase you generally get by replacing an average weapon with the best in slot weapon on a character, and that's just one of the benefits Nahida has over other Dendro units. In fact, most of Nahida's value comes from her elemental skill, which marks opponents on cast and will continuously deal damage to all of them following elemental reactions, on a cooldown that depends on how many electro units you have on the team if you use her elemental burst. Of course, the damage part is quite valuable, as there isn't really a dendro field character that can replicate her damage, especially on a AoE scale. That's not all, however. Nahida's elemental skill also has a convenient particle generation mechanic, which allows it to generate particles not on cast, but on a delay. Generally, she generates 3 particles every 8.25 seconds, which might not be a lot, but that delay is a great thing that will allow you to control who's directly receiving those particles. On Genshin Impact, the active character is always receiving more energy than standby characters from particles, so that's really important. Assuming she generates 6 particles throughout a 20 seconds rotation, and a part of those will go directly to Old Hatem, that will make her a great battery option for him compared to most other Dendro units. In fact, somebody like Dendro Traveler will not only generate fewer particles per rotation, but he also will have a much higher need to feed those particles to himself, since he's even more energy hungry than Old Hatem. In comparison, Nahida has a 50 energy cost elemental burst that she will use once every 20 seconds on average, which is easily manageable energy-wise on a double dendro team. On top of all of the things I've said, her elemental skill is also an excellent enabler for the deep wood set, 
as its AOE hits will allow you to have extremely consistent danger resistance reduction uptime on basically all opponents on field, and no other dendro unit can really match that combination of traits. All things considered, while many people have focused on energy requirements as a reasoning for Nahida's irreplaceability as a partner for Othatum, the reality is much harsher than that. In fact, the damage loss that comes from having 150% energy recharge on Othatum instead of 133% by removing some crit substats is just a mere 80%, so it's not even comparable to Nahida's Elemental Mastery buff alone. If you're lacking Nahida, it'll be especially noticeable on spread teams, where Old Hatem's personal damage output is the most important compared to all of his possible setups, and where there just aren't many great replacements. Let's say that you decide to replace Nahida with Yao Yao, who's the only Dendro character that can match her battery-wise, and use the remaining two slots for two offensive electro units, like Fischl and Beidou or Fischl and Yae. The issue with these electro units is that they're just not that good if certain conditions aren't met. On this type of spread team, where you're lacking units like Kazua or Bennett, so units that have historically been essential for characters like Fischl or Beidou, their personal damage takes a huge hit compared to other teams. If you also consider other things, like Fischl's A4 passive being out of the picture on a quickened team where most of the on-field procs are spread and the AE causing rotation extensions through her long cast times, it just becomes impossible for any combination of electro units to replace Nahida's total contribution. On a game like Genshin, where you can generally clear stuff comfortably if you reach a certain team DPS level, I don't like to call specific units must-have or irreplaceable, but it's fair to say that the difference between having Nahida and not having her will be extremely noticeable on spread and quick bloom teams. That said, Olhaitam still has other options outside of those teams, like Hyperbloom or Burgeon, teams that rely almost entirely on transformative reactions damage to perform, so for those, you won't need Nahida to have great results. Luckily, those teams have a high damage floor, as long as you're able to produce enough tender application for Bloom's generation to be consistent. I'm done for today. Overall, if what you're looking from Old Hatem is getting as much damage as possible from him, you might be disappointed in the results if you're lacking Nahida, even in the scenario you manage to get his signature weapon. If you enjoyed the video, leave a thumbs up and subscribe. See you next time!